One morning I walked up to this. Time to do something about it and build myself a sexy bamboo cabinet. To get my bamboo wood, I looked for a bush that seemed up for a challenge and I started planking right in front of it. To do this right, you have to make this look really easy. I recommend that you start reading a thick novel at a slow pace. If all goes well, the bamboo becomes competitive and starts planking as well. Since this bamboo was kind of a sore loser, I just had to label this guy. Sorry, not sorry. Now, if you don't have the bamboo in the garden, you can also drive to Germany and buy some planks in the Bauhaus. Anyway, enough with the nonsense, let's get started, yeah? For the top and bottom part, I use an 80 by 60 cm bamboo plank. Before I split this in half, I will cut the miters to ensure that they are the same on both top and bottom. I make sure to double check the squareness, because this influences how well all corners will fit in the final assembly. Ninety-nine point seven on both diagonals means that this part is perfectly square and I can move on to the side panels. One little side note here, I am by no means a woodworker, so if I do something stupid, please let me know in the comments so we can all learn a bit. And if you write in in a funny way, you will earn extra points. To achieve a square end result, I have to cut the side panels to the exact same length and make sure that my miters are correct. Now that all miters have been cut, I can rip the planks into the desired width for the cabinet. I try to be as precise as possible to avoid a second pass with the track saw. After almost messing up my side panels, because I'm too stupid to fix them to the table, I could start to work on the biscuit joints for the miters. Actually, it's kind of a miracle that I'm smart enough to build small testing pieces for each step. In this case, I checked the depth of the biscuit joiner on a piece of scrap wood before making a slot in the actual workpiece. With a fairly straight looking angle and an acceptable gap, I pumped myself up for a joiner marathon that lasted for months. After months of grueling work, it was finally time to work on the rabbit for the back panel. I want this panel to be recessed 1mm more than its thickness to ensure that I can pull the cabinet tight into the wall during the installation. I made another test piece, quadruple checked my measurements and went on it like a beginner with an awful lot of luck. After I milled out the rabbits, I could measure up the dimensions for the back panel and cut it to size. Another testing block verified the biscuit joint, so I continued my marathon on the back panel as well. For the sliding doors, I will just cut out some tracks in the top and bottom panels and feel quite happy about myself afterwards. To make the tracks, I'm just using my track saw and a chisel because the router might kick out the remaining thin layer of bamboo. This would result in an impressive flood of tears. The tracks in the top panel are twice as deep as I need to be able to easily insert the door panels. To be able to mount the cabinet on the wall, I decided to make some slots in the back panel with the drill press. I quickly learned that I'm incapable of making nice slots with this tool, so I switched over to the router to clean up my hole. 
And I do mean the one that I just drilled. In the wood, I mean. Anyhow, uh, it was time to insert the biscuits and do a dry fit to check if everything looks good. So I inserted the biscuits in the biscuit slots. I meant the other biscuits in the other biscuit slots. All in all, the build up went pretty smooth and with a couple of slaps I was able to close all the gaps in the carcass of my cabinet. Now in all my building excitement I almost forgot to add the holes for the packs that support the shelf, so I quickly marked them out and used a drill press for consistent holes. With all the parts separated, this was also a great time to sand the inner sides of the panels until they felt as smooth as a piece of bamboo that has just been sanded. Now before continuing with the actual glue up, I decided to make some custom clamping tools to better close the miter joints. I'm using a 12mm plywood with a mitered piece on the edge for clamping. For extra grip, I attached a strip of old sandpaper on the back with some double sided tape. I already installed these clamping tools for a quick checkup and to save time when I'm applying the glue. I make sure to locate the pressure in the center of the joint to apply an even force over the miter cut, as this will keep my corners as square as possible. I'm assembling this cabinet in multiple sessions as it gives me more time to add the glue and to clamp things together. Also, I'm fairly incompetent so I need to take baby steps in this build. As I'm adding the back part, I make sure to check if all corners still remain perfectly square. If not, now is the time to correct them because once the glue is dry, tears are my only option left. On the second corner I built, I had a small gap on the outside of the joint. I tried to rub in the fibers with a shaft of a screwdriver to close off the gap, and to my surprise this actually worked really well. Now it was time to assemble the two corners and complete the carcass of my cabinet. I did a dry insulation once more to define the clamping strategy, or as the Germans like to say, die Spannstrategie. Once this strategy was defined, I revved myself up and glued up the parts like somebody who's gluing up parts for a wall mounted cabinet. When I removed all the clamps after drying, I saw that one miter joint had taken on the mission to make my life miserable as it displayed a small but noticeable gap. To fix this issue, I cleaned up the glue in the joint a little bit, added some new glue that I forced into the joint with a knife, and I started sanding to get some wood dust into the joint. With a nicely warmed up index finger, I pressed sawdust into the glue a little bit more and the story goes that the complete woodworking community was shocked by the results. Now that the carcass was assembled, I could cut the sliding doors to the right dimensions. I chose to work with a 5mm MDF as it gives me just enough stability to glue on the fabric, while keeping it as lightweight as possible. Next up are the cabinet handles. I'm using this old wallet I had laying around, which I think is made from onion leather, because each time I open it, tears well up in my eyes. I sliced up the wallet like a sushi ninja, softened it with a mallet for easy processing, and I seasoned it well to make a tasteful design. For the core of the handles, I'm using some of the bamboo scraps I had left. I marked all dimensions, drilled the holes for the magnets, and cut everything to size. 
Now I just had to send them down to the correct shape and just a few ponies later I could casually walk into the workshop to drop them off in style. Now it was time to insert the super duper magnets with the polarity switched so I could operate the doors from both sides by simply rotating the handle from top to bottom. To increase the magnetic strength, I place two magnets on top of each other per cavity. Once all magnets were pressed in, I could slice up the onion leather strips to the correct width and wrap them around the wood using my homemade super duper glooper. I made sure to leave some extra length on the leather so I could evenly cut off the top. Back to the sliding doors. I marked off the top and bottom area where I don't want to have any fabric. Now I could also define the exact midpoint, so I added the position for the handle, drilled out cavities and pushed in the magnets with the polarity switched. A bit of fast curing epoxy will fixate them until the end of time. The blank areas received a layer of yummy monocoat oil to prevent wood from tearing out when I removed the strong transparent tape that I use as a non-stick layer for the wood glue. In the meantime I also received the fabrics and a little note from my dear friend Carl. I really have to say that the blue fabric felt really nice and the other one felt really white. So I sliced up two pieces of both fabrics slightly bigger than the door panels. In case the glue would shrink during curing schmurring, I had no issues, tissues, smishes. A generous squirt of wood glue and some brush strokes later, I felt like adding the felt and repeating the same process for the leather on the other side. Also, please follow the instructions on the screen. If you're thinking that wood glue is not suitable for these type of materials, Please realize that you are so wrong. After I glued up the panels on both sides, I kept them in my industrial press for one day to keep them from bending, fending, schmending. During this time, I did some sanding so I could apply oil on the cabinet. A wrinkled can of oil, a homemade squeegee and some cloth will do the trick here. I just drip on some oil, scoop out the pudding skins and use the squeegee to distribute the oil over the surface. With a small brush I picassoed some oil on the sides as well. A few moments later I removed the excess oil with the squeegee and finished the surface with the cloth. Basically this process went on for days and days without sleep or food until I dropped the oil soaked rags in a bucket of water to prevent fire. In the meantime the sliding doors were dry so I took a fresh knife and cut away the sides by using the wood as a guide. For the top and bottom of the door I used my track as a guide to cut away the fabric at the exact position of the markings I made in the beginning. Of course, this went exactly as planned, because, well, that's basically how I roll. As the doors were the final parts to be finished, I could start to install the cabinet on the wall of my studio schmudio. I placed some sawhorses up against the wall and heightened them with some wood to the desired position for the cabinet. 
After some fine tuning, I marked up the position of the holes and the rest is history. If you are eager to build this yourself, I suggest that you get started because you don't have all day. I've also linked the tools that I use for this project down below, as well as some tools you should not use. Because I strongly believe that knowing what not to use is equally important. Now I just have to slide in the doors, snap on the handles and this cabinet is done. The cool thing about this design is that you can impress your friends and family with the double sided doors. To change it, just take off the handles, turn around the doors and snap on the handles again. Now if you please can all keep quiet, we can enjoy some nice detailed footage and I will see you in the next one.